ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our Tuesday weather update for December the 6th. It's good to be back. We've got some changeable weather around New Zealand with warm winds in the north, cooler winds in the south, while over in Australia, a calmer spell for now considering what you got across spring. Let's take a look on the animated wind map. We've got a few low pressure zones, uh, a couple of them out here in the Tasman Sea and a third one around the Great Australian Bight. Uh, none of them are particularly nasty, although this one in the Tasman, closer to Tasmania, is a little bit more energy. And between these two, it's gonna drive in some slow moving rain. They're going to merge together. And the subtropical airflow up here is drifting down over the north, while in the South Island, a cooler southerly is coming in for you. So we've got colder weather in the South Island, warmer and more humid weather going on in the north. Let's have a look at the rainfall coming up. This is the three day rainfall map for New Zealand. And over here is where you're going to see the heaviest falls with 100 to 125 millimetres, maybe a little bit more through the mountains and ranges. But as you go further northwards up to Greymouth and the more populated areas, those rainfall totals drop right off. And then the other system in the north that drives in heavier rain around parts of uh, northern parts of Auckland, around eastern parts of Whangarei, oh sorry, eastern parts of Northland around Whangarei, and then also rain around uh, Coromandel Peninsula and uh, Bay of Plenty off towards Gisborne, and that total um, will be around about 45 to 70 millimetres. It varies a wee bit depending on exactly where the rain clouds line up. Over here, Canterbury, Otago, the lowest rainfall totals coming in for you. So let's have a look at Australia for the next five days and very little in the way of rain. There's just a bit of wet weather brushing the eastern side, but main centres like Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne and Adelaide not looking at very much in the way of rain. Perth maybe getting a few millimetres. Now let's have a look at temperatures. One more thing to talk about. Overnight tonight, this is comparing Australia and New Zealand and how we're so different at the moment. Overnight tonight, the lower South Island has a frost risk. You can see these maps at weatherwatch.co.nz. The purple means uh, a frost, the blue means you're getting right down close to frost territory. Now contrast that with Australia tomorrow afternoon and what you're seeing on the shaded area there are temperatures over 35 degrees Celsius with places going up over 40, up to the 43 degree mark here, 45 possible through the inland areas, so pretty hot weather. Not so much though on the coast, but still getting up to 27 in Sydney. So let's have a look at the forecast. Here is the actual weather map as we go through Wednesday. So we've got uh, light winds for much of Eastern Australia, but windier here. This is actually a cooler southerly coming in for Adelaide. So you're not quite getting the same heat that the rest of the country is getting further to the north. In New Zealand, um, mild airflow is coming out of the subtropics and that's going to replace the colder weather you've got right now. So it starts off around two or three degrees tomorrow morning in Gore and parts of Southland. And by afternoon, northerlies come in and your daytime temperature shoots up to close to 20 degrees with 20 degrees coming up over the coming days. So a warm Wednesday afternoon on the way. Now by Thursday, we've got a bit of a squash zone in the north here. That means low pressure just to the north of New Zealand, pretty weak, but with a big strong high out over the Chathams, makes for a windy nor'easter. Now we have one of those in early November or early to mid-November caused power cuts and flooding around Walkworth and Matakana and those places to the north of Auckland uh, City. So there could be more wind and rain. This doesn't look as aggressive, but again, a squash zone can create gale force winds. So we've got that on Thursday. Mild north to northwesterlies elsewhere, but a very different story over here in Australia on Thursday. Southerlies rocketing up, dropping temperatures in places like Sydney and Canberra, Melbourne, and certainly in Hobart. So you'll be seeing that, or feeling it, I should say, on Thursday. And by Friday, it's still with you. The southerly's still there, but it's fading with the incoming high. So some cold nights on the way for you. But over in the New Zealand side, that low pressure zone in the Tasman's all sort of gone into one place. So that low gets bigger and deeper. We've got rain bands or fronts trying to cross over but this big powerful high pushing back against it, making it a little bit windier. So those nor'westers are gonna be picking up, but it's also going to slow down those rain clouds. So as we go into the weekend, Saturday still sees this system trying to roll in with rain and showers and it falls apart to some degree. These fronts aren't exactly aggressive. The pale blue bits in there show that it's really falling apart as it moves northwards. Take a look at our website or ruralweather.co.nz Either of those sites will give you your rainfall totals for the weekend. And our final map for Sunday shows it mostly clearing up, 
westerly winds carrying on. Most of this wet weather around uh, Bay of Plenty probably by then and starting to fall apart and on the west coast of the South Island. And the next system over here around Victoria moving in, another cold southerly coming in for Adelaide, um, but it won't be so bad on the other side, mild northerlies coming through for Sydney. So it's a pretty changeable weather pattern. It's still not as bad as it was in November. It's the same kind of weather pattern that we had in November, but it's starting to show signs of slowing down as we go into summer. And that's what we're expecting to see as we keep on going through the next few weeks ahead. More lows and highs, but just slowing down. Everything's slowing down a wee bit more. Um, even weather systems get a bit lazy in summer, except for tropical cyclones, I suppose, but we're not seeing them on the map. Not just yet, anyway. That's all from me. We'll see you again tomorrow, Wednesday, with our next update.